un atelier sur cancer et emploi, sujet essentiel puisqu'il concerne la vie pendant et après le cancer. 30% de la part des, des patients qui perdent ou que perdent ou quittent leur emploi dans les deux ans après le diagnostic de la maladie. Alors comment accompagner ce maintien à l'emploi Clé de l'inclusion sociale, clé aussi d'une sécurité financière pour les malades. Pour en parler, j'accueille la porte-parole du groupe. Elle, est, elle a conduit de nombreuses recherches sur le sujet. Elle a aussi participé à la mise en œuvre des guidelines sur le sujet dans son pays, euh, aux Pays-Bas. Angélique de Rilke, professeure à la Maastricht University, is with, is with us. Hello, thanks to be here with, uh, with us. Uh, we're going to see the three statements of the group, but just to, uh, to have a few introductions on these very specific topics, maybe the less uh, expected topics on the five, actually, with the return to work. Uh, it's how, I would say, why return to work is nowadays for you a, a major issue in cancer health policy, and also why is it such a problem? whether for employers, whether for public institutions. Well, thank you. It's, it's a privilege to uh, talk about this. It's actually my topic. I've been working on return to work for 20 years uh, in research at my university and also in practical projects. But the, the link is very much to cancer here, and there are specific reasons for that. Uh, due to better treatments, as we all know, the survival rates have increased tremendously. This is a good thing, of course. It's certainly positive, but it also calls more and more for looking at quality of life and survivorship. Survivorship is not just surviving cancer, but living after having had this trajectory. Um, and Uh, cancer takes place in the working age, um, uh, 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 it's about 40% of the population is still in working age or is in working age, is already in working age because we also talk about the young, young people. Um, and we know from research that it's so important to get back to work to really feel the full uh, uh, survivorship of, of cancer. Um, And if you don't go back to work, and that's taking place in about, it, it differs a bit between countries, about one third doesn't get back. They had work before, but they didn't get back. And what about young people who can't uh, enter the labor market because of their cancer history? Um, well, uh, it's making it more difficult. So that's, that's an, a major issue. But then the practicalities also. Uh, because we have specific characteristics of cancer, it's a different type of diagnosis. At the moment of the diagnosis, most patients do not have so many symptoms. So also the employer do not perceive them as be being very ill. The, the workability decreases once the treatments, uh, during the treatment period. So it's more difficult to manage than the other type of diagnosis. Um, and Next, we have many innovations in the treatments, which means that the return to work trajectory or the, the getting back, the, the, uh, when you get back to work, this, this can uh, last years, this, uh, uh, 10 years maybe. And there are more long lasting effects. We know more about it, the fatigue. So um, our systems, our social welfare systems, do not really fix, uh, uh, align to that. Um, well, we are going to talk about legislation yeah, yeah, yeah. here. It's, it's very important <laughs> because it's like with the relapse thing, it's not like you're sick and then you're not sick and the welfare system is a bit on that vision. Yes, exactly. As the employers, you can have relapse, you can, and even yeah. years after. So it's, it's also more difficult for employers, this challenge of making work invitations is also more difficult. It's not you make a plan and you just follow the plan, but it's, And, and also the unpredictability of many trajectories make it also more difficult to manage. So employers refrain a bit, they have, they have their dilemmas, they have their concerns uh, also uh, from their side. And then if nobody does a lot, then people are not supported well. And, it, and, it's, it's, and it's also 
in relation to the social security uh, legislation uh, and, and all our legislation and also the occupational health physicians and so on. But yeah. there is more to talk yeah, about. Yeah. What, what, what the, the European level, uh, how is it very pertinent uh, to move the regulation and to help support the actors? Yes, yeah. So w what we need is better return to work policies for, uh, for all in working age. Um, and in particularly that they fit with all these special uh, characteristics of cancer. That's for now, it's really important to address that. Um, and all our countries, it's what we share. And this was also, uh, I think, uh, in, the, in the speech of uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Trier Lenoir, um, we share something in Europe. We share this history of welfare states. We have some degree of income protection. Uh, we have some support for having a decent job, but it varies also across the, the member states. Um, so we share this vision, there is a lot of variation, and now a word to France, because I think that France is historically um, in a very good position to lead in improving uh, legislation and establishing uh, institutes. And, uh, uh, so it, it's, it's also about improving and having them in place. Um, so, en français, <laughs> um, oui. un grand merci uh, à la France pour uh, son in initiative dat, 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 oh. dans ce domaine. <laughs> non? Dat, oh, it's difficult for me, me to me switch to between uh, English and do French. Do you want me to help um, dat, 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 dat oh. the, Where is it? Oh, <laughs> the, oh. oh c est, c est <laughs> pour son initiative. <laughs> D'adresser. D'adresser. Merci d'adresser. It's, like, it's like, you know, in the theater, uh, I'm, the, I'm the guy who, who, who is <laughs> high, hidden and give you uh, the word. D'adresser, cancer et emploi pendant sa présidence uh, de l'Union Européenne. Um, thanks, thanks. It can be applause. <laughs> I wouldn't do half of this in, in Dutch. <laughs> Not a word. Uh, let's, maybe we can see the statements, the three statements coming. And the first statements from this group, very important statement. Let's, yes. To promote and implement a supportive legal framework for people with cancer to facilitate their, their return to work, but also develop le legislation concerning the right to be forgotten when accessing financial service to prevent discriminations. Um, how uh, can the right to be forgotten be a real asset for the patients uh, with cancer? And when the groups speak about legal framework, is it like a call for a new law or a new directive to, to come on this subject? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it, we have discussed in the working group uh, quite a lot about this, this right to be forgotten and how it's linked. And I would really like to, to, to emphasize um, that it's about, uh, it's very important for those who are not um, uh, employees working for an employer, but for the self, and particularly for the self-employed. And we have an increasing uh, number of self-employed. So it, within my country, and we are a bit ahead, I think, on, on European average, one third of the people that work do not work in a permanent job for an employer. The other one, that one third is self-employed, but also in platform work, in, in all kinds of flexible contracts. So it's very important to keep that in mind and to safeguard financial, financial security. And the right to be forgotten means that after 10 years, and now in France after five years, it's not in your, in your list anymore. It's not on your CV anymore. You, you, if you apply for insurance, for mortgages, for anything financially, it's, you have the right that your cancer history is to be forgotten, so you, you can have more financial safety, which is very important. Because and it's these also people apply by themselves all the time. Yes, for yes, exactly. They are not protected by the, by the uh, social system. Yes. So that's one thing. But more has to be done, of course, regarding the right to return to work. That would be our wish, on our wish list, of course. Uh, so. First, it's very important that 
Um, well, uh, the previous speaker has spoken about uh, workplaces and their responsibilities, but they also have responsibilities regarding uh, return to work. And um, the f uh, during the French presidency, it's, um, uh, uh, there, there will be established, or this, this is the aim, to have a specific work stream um, in the Euro European Bees and Cancer Plan, a work stream on return to work. Uh, so it's not only about uh, primary prevention in the workplaces, but it's also about a secondary prevention. Um, and so we have to work on uh, return to work in directives in, um, uh, in all places uh, in the Europe, uh, from Europe, uh, Europe to, well, the, the, the member states that has also be, been addressed, this implementation issue. But there is a very important um, uh, directive, the 89 directive, uh, which addresses uh, healthy workplaces, uh, social rights in the workplaces, and it's still a very important one, and I still teach my students about that. So it's very important what Europe, Europe says about what workplaces have to do. That's really important. It may, t it may take some time in some states. Okay, but you have, you have to, to, to give these examples and, and to, to establish a standard. And have an agenda concretely about yes. this. Let's go to the second statement. The second statement is to develop a structure of interaction as well as, as tools and services for stakeholders and people with cancer to support them and be guided in the process of the return to work. Um, how could such a framework be uh, existing? I mean, some of you in the, uh, called it a, uh, an employer clubs, uh, of, in a way, mm -hmm. and would this concern, like it's always the case, the big, the big companies, and what about the small and medium companies? Usually they are a step aside from these initiatives. Yes, yes. So, uh, well, we talked a lot about this because in our group there is a lot of expertise on all kinds of things that could be done. Um, but we agreed on this is the structure of interaction that many different stakeholders, actors are involved, have to be involved publicly, uh, and pr private and public stakeholders. So it's employers, it's healthcare, it's, um, uh, it's a direct social environment. Um, return to work, uh, staying in work for, for this long period during which you are still recovering um, requires better structures. Um, and then you need tools and services for each of these stakeholders. And uh, the employer club is, is one. And yes, you may be critical about that. You know in most countries the majority of the employers have small and medium enterprises, but, the, but in most countries also the majority of the people are working in the larger enterprises because they have more people working there. That's one thing. Another thing is that um, this is about giving voice to the employers, giving, um, um, uh, uh, showing examples and gathering the early adopters. The people from health prevention will know what I'm talking about, the early adapters. So, they, they show this commitment. They say, okay, cancer is difficult to manage in the workplace. We struggle with the dilemmas, the concerns, but we do something and we try to develop ourselves in, in workshops, in all kinds of things. That might work for um, a part of the workers, uh, but we need other types of tools and services for others. Uh, uh, we have developed in, in Belgium, well, as you might know Maastricht is not so far from Belgium, so, so we collaborate also with them. We have developed a website for small medium enterprises, so they can easily get all kind of information for different stages of survivorship on, uh, in relation to cancer uh, with, with the, uh, on this website, uh, because they do not have a lot of time. Um, and also services in hospitals, France is ahead of this and, and uh, you have really great examples that you have easy access to work-related service to even occupational physicians in the hospitals. Uh, we are looking at that also from Maastricht and the Netherlands. Um, so it's about also mapping which are the different groups because um, equal access to care and to support is important here. And we have a very diverse group. We did not address yet the work-life balance issue, combining caregiving tasks. We had yesterday an example of this uh, mother, 
diagnosed with breast cancer, single mother, having to work, having to deal with breast cancer, having to care for the children, this is not a rare example. This is, this is just in our environment. So um, it's important that we take into account uh, the, uh, whether so the services work for the different groups. So, so it might be like places to meet uh, and to uh, inspire and motivate too, because this is mm -hmm. two main things, and tools that can be uh, existing and then uh, generalize in the Europe if it's possible for, because they're working where they are happening at the moment. Exactly. It's a, I like it with the mapping. Exactly, we want to share uh, better all our examples and it's also about this uh, more specific translation that was also discussed in, uh, with the uh, uh, previous speaker. So it's not only translating in the language but it's also translating to the context. Uh, we need to, we have expertise, we have quite some knowledge but we need more knowledge, we are also, also going to talk about that. Um, uh, but we and we do a lot, but we need to share better. So that's also in this uh, statement. Yeah. In third, this, uh, thir thir third statement is about the knowledge. Uh, yeah. Build up research regarding the return to work for people with research by leading on e EU research program. What is uh, today, and you know that by heart, I would say, the major difficulty to lead researches on this field? It's a very specific field, but mm -hmm. what are the main difficulties? The, arg arg the, mic here, oh, yeah. the argument is very often, well, countries differ in legislation, so you can't compare very well. Well, we, we should see that as something we can learn from each other. There is, there is a tradition of uh, comparative research. We have methods for that, for doing that. So um, it's a chance to learn from each other. So first, we have to map better the legislation and how it affects um, the return to work and so on. Um, so, and then um, it's also very much about numbers. Uh, that has, has also been addressed this morning already. Um, we need, to, as researchers, you always need higher, uh, large numbers to say something. So we need really to share the data and to uh, collect uh, 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 more, more numbers. Um, also in the, in the young people, uh, around the young people with cancer, I just addressed Briefly, there is also an issue when you are still in school, you are diagnosed with cancer, how will your working career be? And will it no we know from research that um, the work participation at the age of 40 is less if you had cancer in your, uh, when you were young. Um, so these kind of um, data, the, the groups within a country might sometimes in some countries be, be too small, but you wa want to share uh, here uh, the, experience, the specific experiences of, of, the, uh, of the patients. Um, yeah. What would be the next step through all these uh, uh, statements and, and proposals? Because each one has a quite a big scope, actually. Um, yeah, well, first, uh, having returned to work in this, in this work, uh, 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 as a work stream uh, in the Beating Cancer Plan, that would be uh, 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 really nice, and France made a promise there. Um, and secondly, I think there's an urgency to meet, to meet in uh, conferences uh, and, to, and to also uh, write provisional research, pl research plans so we are ready when the budgets are there and we have a better consortium, including all the groups that already exist, uh, of course. Um, so the French have planned uh, uh, conference meetings, um, the Czech have planned something on, on survivorship, so um, we see opportunities. I, I have confidence that the Swedes will do so as well and also will include this, um, uh, this topic of return to work and cancer or cancer and employment. Um, and what we have seen now with this working group, there is a lot of expertise and there is also a lot of commitment uh, for a l more long-term strategy because for, for return to work and staying in the workplace, we need longitudinal data. So we need this long-term strategy on, on research. We can start with smaller research and sh share better. Um, well, that's, that's uh, so, so meet, meet each other uh, already within this presidency. 
we, we can see uh, through your uh, presentation and the way you do it that it was really a group where there are a lot of uh, um, expertise and also gentle approach from each other and learning from each other country. Uh, we, we don't have much time for the questions. Just uh, recording uh, a commentaire d'internet uh, uh, qui dit uh, en France, on a les RQTH qui sont les reconnaissances des travailleurs handicapés délivrées par les MDPH qui permet aux personnes d'obtenir des aménagements de postes ou d'horaires euh, auprès de leurs employeurs afin de les aider à se maintenir en emploi. C'est une mesure, c'est un dispositif qui est encore peu connu. Donc, il y a There is also stuff to say about what's existing already and can be benefiting to people returning uh, to work after cancer. Thanks yes. a lot, Angelique, and we can applaud her a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. On va passer. Et il y a un dialogue social sur la santé et le travail qui existe, qui existe, monsieur, et qui existe avec un plan stratégique sur la santé et le travail qui existe. Je ne dis, je dis pas qu'il est suffisant, mais je dis qu'il est existant en tous les cas et qu'il est complémentaire de ce qui est conduit ici avec un organisme qui est au chat à Bilbao qui travaille aussi sur la prévention de ces risques-là. You, you, you suggested or you, you said I didn't include a trade union, uh, the l'union de trade. Yeah. Oui. Très bien. Euh, je, okay. je comprends. Et, et, but the, the, I, I could the point, not the, the, call all the, the, yeah, I couldn't uh, include all stakeholders, but it's in our minds. Yeah. C'est dans l'esprit. Merci à vous. Euh, merci beaucoup. On peut l'applaudir très fort.